to get ready for this. Yeah, there is a sink. Hey, you can feel it like an elevator. Yep. We're going to learn how to do super slow, steep, stable approaches in a more forgiving environment. Yeah, so that's the profile we want. Eh? That's what we're after. Roger. If I don't need to blip anything, just let it land. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. Clear prop. So we're out here in Hood River, Oregon, and I'm gonna to learn to do some backcountry flying with these guys. This is kind of the culmination of a bunch of tailwheel flying and really getting to learn how to do backcountry flying properly. It's a total privilege to be able to share this sort of stuff. I'm a guy who can absolutely say tailwheel flying has made me better in all aspects of flying. And Takao invited me out to share this training. They're not paying me to say this, they didn't even ask me to say it, but they are probably one of the best places in the world to do this sort of training. Steve, welcome to TAC Arrow. Appreciate you coming out here to play with us. This is Brad, Brad's one of our experienced flight instructors, and uh, today well, you're kind of getting a special treat. You get to fly Cubcrafter's latest and greatest, which is the Carbon Cub FX3. Now I'm lucky to be flying the newest hotness in the tailwheel world for this one, but I did start off in a beat up old Super Cub with my basic tailwheel. But for this one, obviously we're doing some pretty advanced stuff. These landings can be a little bit more of an arrival. You know, we're not looking for those super sweet, soft three points uh, to impress each other. The FX3 is a very potent machine. It has the ability to do things that other aircraft just can't do. And Brad is going to work with you and show you the differences with that. So the plan today, spend some time here in the pattern using our grass strip and, and take full advantage of what the airplane can do, get comfortable in it. And then after that, we're gonna pre-brief and we're gonna actually head out and we're gonna go fly in the backcountry. This is gonna be the first of several episodes covering this training. I probably got about eight hours flying with these guys, which culminated in some amazing, legit backcountry flying. And your previous experience was in an FX? Or? So I flew an SS, an FX, and the X-Cub all in the same day. I'm gonna do the Cub Crafters Grand Slam hat trick thing. There's, there's three of them and I'm gonna fly them all in one day. It's kind of blurry how it all blended together, but I do remember the this distinct differences that I noticed. Sure. But it'll be interesting to hear what you think are the, the things I should look for in this one that are different. Absolutely. Um, we've got a little higher horsepower engine. That's the Cub Crafters 363i. So it's advertised as 186 horsepower and it's got the constant speed prop on it. Um, so those are two pretty major differences just in terms of the feel, the throttle differences and having uh, pitch control there. So this will be the initial training where the margins are wider, but it's still preparing me for advanced flying. So this is not going to be covering basic tailwheel techniques. We've got a lot of episodes that already address that. For now, i got to get ready to handle this stuff in the actual backcountry. The other main thing I kind of want to get you comfortable with today is with that bigger prop spinning up there, one of the biggest differences I can put a finger on is a difference in the flare, the feeling of the elevator authority you have. When you're trying to get this plane slow, sometimes you need a little bit of power to keep that positive airflow and continued elevator effect. Now I'm not going to cover the entire walk around here, but I will share some cool unique tidbits like this. My first three concerns are, do I have enough fuel, is it good fuel, and do we have oil? So with those three things, which usually take a lot of time to rectify out of the way, um, then we can kind of start the uh, exterior walk around. That tip resonated with me because in my early days renting, I had multiple times where I got most of the way through a walk around and then realized that I needed fuel or oil. And then by the time I got it solved, my booking was significantly shorter. So some of the air work we're gonna do is gonna go up. Um, just like with any plane, you're checking it out, see how it stalls, see how it stalls clean or in the landing configuration. Um, get a feel for when that elevator becomes ineffective and an idea of how much energy is left in the wing. Um, if we're able to do that, the easiest way to shorten our rolling distance is to fly a slower approach speed. If we've got less energy in the system, we're going to be able to make an ultimately shorter roll without the use of heavily relying on brakes. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the goal to get you accurate in a nice steep stable approach uh, and come in and have some nice uh, controlled short touchdowns. Now another unique thing about these airplanes are the massive tires that allow them to land almost anywhere. Uh, we're not really going to get into the controlling the roll and tail up braking and so on, but we do need to talk about how we're going to handle braking on this flight. Most of the models I think you've flown included tow brakes. Yep. Um, the Top Cub really being uh, the only heel brake uh, in the fleet, so these should feel pretty familiar. Um, they are powerful brakes, uh, so always a part of the briefing is uh, we're only using them to assist pretty much on the taxi. Uh, or towards the end of the landing roll to help slow down a little more, as long as everything's under good control. 
So you're not going to see us doing that crazy advanced braking where you keep the tail up and it sort of slams down when you come to a full stop. There's just too much risk of a prop strike. We're not going to get into that right now. Okay, we're clear. Here we go. Out over traffic, Orange Cub, taxiing from Southeast Residential across both actives for the North Taxiway. With transfer of controls, we'll use the three-way exchange. My controls, your controls, my controls. With that exchange, if I'm taking the controls from you to fix something, my expectation is that hands come off throttle and stick and feet come away from the pedals. Uh, the most common uh, unintentional error is a foot on a brake, and that's what I'm trying to kind of groom into the response. That's the one thing I can't fight against. I can't pull a brake. <laughs> so we'll just taxi down to kind of the midfield there. Get a feel for how it handles, see if the steering feels any different to you. Yep, I mean, it's, it feels like a nice, it's a lot easier to taxi than a chipmunk. Oh, good. You ever flown a chipmunk? No, I never have. Okay. I saw you've been flying some uh, T6s lately, too. Yeah, that's my latest uh, personal that's achievement. That's cool milestone. Yeah. Well, the ground has done it. Now you got to get the airplane back on the ground, buddy, so. We're going to uh, set power smoothly. Stick will come forward a little bit. As we're doing that, yep. the tail up. Then we're going to rotate when we feel like it's ready to fly. We're going to climb out at 51. Uh, 57. 57. So it's 57 and 71. Correct. Roger, Roger. Okay. All right, I'm good to go. If you're good to go. I'm ready to go. If you're off the Temps brakes. Good. Perfect. It gets off the ground awfully quick. I like a normal takeoff to look like smooth application of power up to full. Stick transitioning from back to slightly forward to neutral to get the tail up. And then by the time the powers come in, you're Good. through most of the roll on this thing. Yeah. Um, so just as long as we can get the tail up a little bit and then a little back pressure to ask it to come off when it's ready. It'll be ready awfully fast. Wow, I can really get a lot more pitch up than that for 57. That's pretty crazy, isn't that it? That is ridiculous. I, I think you'll have some pretty good grins as we climb out here. Okay, and then we can get rid of the flaps to go to uh, 70 or so? Yeah. 71's pretty specific. Aiming around 70 is good with me. Okay. And we're going to do a left pattern? Yeah. So having been more than a year since I've done this type of flying at all, this first one was just a normal pattern and landing before we did some air work to get warmed up for flying this airplane really slow to get working on those steep, stable approaches. Wow, it's a lot of power back to get 19. Okay. Yeah. And you want 2300 RPM for now on downwind? That'd work. The next step's going to be pulling the power back anyways to the point yeah. where it controls RPM. Coming into land, once the power's back to the point where the RPMs are coming down with it, I can come to full forward on the prop. Head over traffic, orange cup, left downwind, seven grass. And we're already here and we're high. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so power's back, I might as well go uh, full fine now. Yep. Yeah. And I'll get some flap in there. And watch, wide arc, yep, good. So how many, what do we want, three notches or so? Two notches will be fine for here. That's what I just did, yeah. All right, just show me a normal three-point approach for, for your perspective. Okay, I'm a little tight here. You want it to be at uh, between 55 and 60? Yeah, that'd yeah, be great. Yeah, so we're high, right? Should I get more flaps in there? Yeah, a little bit more. 500. Okay, problem's full fine. Mixture rich or leave it where we had it? That's considered rich for today's yeah. ops? We'd say set, yep. Okay. Five things on final that are my primary concerns. Are we on airspeed? Are we on glide path? Is our nose straight? Are we drifting? And are our feet off the brakes? If we can nail those five things, we can come in and make a touchdown and a tail dragger. If we're touching down side loaded, it's gonna want a ground loop instantly. If we're touching down with some drift, it'll set up that same momentum. Uh, as you're aware from flying tail wheel aircraft, mm -hmm. Keep holding it off. It's a little higher than I thought. <laughs> All good. It's not a T6. It yeah. looks higher than I meant to be there, but I'm blasting I flew a T6, so I guess we'll give me a pass on that. <laughs> yeah, the sight picture is going to be a little lower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cannot hit early in the T6. It's a bad day if you do that. Cool, man. Yeah. Um, things happen faster than I expected on that climb out. Good lord. Yeah. On this one, let's uh, just run out for a second, go do a teeny bit of air work, and then we'll come back in and finish up. But, uh, I can tell you had a pretty good feel for it pretty quickly there. Quick transition probably helps doing all those different types. Yeah. We'll take off out of here, head to the south, uh, and start working on some air work while we're climbing. We'll leave it on that engine monitoring page to make sure our cylinders aren't getting too hot. How about this heading or where you want to be? Sorry. Yeah, just keep pointing it at Mount Hood and we'll continue to climb. And we'll start off with some Dutch rolls. Is that a term yeah. you're familiar with? Yeah, we keep the heading in one place and you... Yes. Yeah. yeah. Just a quick way to feel out the harmony of the ailerons in the rudder. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and feel out some uh, Dutch rolls. Yeah, I need a lot more rudder than that, eh? There we go. 
Yeah, so it's, it's needing more right rudder because of the climb. Correct. Yep, there we go. I got it dialed in about there. Feeling good. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and just start pulling the throttle back a little bit and bring the power back, start feeling some slow flight out. Just see what the plane tells you as you're getting slow, how the controls get a little mushier, and start to identify some of those slow flight characteristics. And we'll continue to hold altitude and, and then go, start to feel out slow flight. And you want to go full fine when the RPM is low or when the manifold pressure is low? Uh, just continue pulling back. If you start to control RPM with the power, then you can go full fine. There you go, you hear it kind of transitioning through. That's your indication. All right, and then we'll just help maintain altitude and then add power to, once I feel like I'm in the slow flight, just add power to keep me there? Yeah. We'll be looking to just kind of flirt with the horn initially and then take it back a little deeper into the horn and see kind of how close we can get to the stall. I don't notice in Cubs a big burble like a Cessna. There's not that big vibration on the tail. It's subtle and it is there, but it's not nearly as much. I feel much more like they give you everything they got right until they quit. Yeah. Um, and in these, unless you have a little bit of power in, uh, it'll give you everything it's got and then it just won't have enough tail down force. We'll kind of mush. If we're mushed, we can kind of explore what that feels like for a little bit and then recover. That's crazy. Huh? So there's the beginning of the horn there and the AOA is the beat behind it. Yeah, I still feel like I have authority though. I don't feel like we're there yet. Yeah, wiggle the controls, see how mushy they are. Yeah, it's not that bad though. It's still flying. Pretty controllable, right? Yeah, so I'm losing a bit of altitude so I add some power. Correct. And you hear the progressive nature of the AOA indicator there? Yep. The more freaking beeps. That's right. Yep. So, 43 to 45. I don't, I don't 45. feel like my trim is uh, doing anything. Am I got? Oh, we bumped the priority. Try now. There we go. So what's that? So right here, oh, okay. if we uh, are messing with cords, it's pretty easy to bump that. Roger. Uh, and that will just turn trim off completely in the center. Okay. Troubleshot that. Cool, yeah. So she's uh, pretty happily flying at 45, 40 indicated. Good. And then let's go ahead and just continue this. We'll do a 180 turn, just feel how slow flight in a turn feels. Right, we'll, we'll use that as a clearing opportunity. And uh, from here on out, go ahead and recover from that. And we'll start doing some power off stalls. So we've seen it fly as slow as about 43 or so. Yep. Feel that kind of... Yeah. That was the uh, prop getting actually full forward. All right, so we'll bring it back to 23 squared. Uh, yeah, for a normal cruise. Okay, so power off stalls. Um, we'll do flaps up initially and full power idle. What we're really looking for is to see when does that tail quit flying? When do I lose the ability to arrest my descent? Okay, so, so power come back. Yep. Do I go full rich on the mixture or leave it set the way we have it? We'll leave it set. It's set appropriate for the altitude. Okay, so props full fine because I was controlling it. Power is all the way to idle. And I'll recover when it stalls. Good. There it is. And you feel there's no aggressive break or anything? No, it was just a mush that I could tell I lost the authority. Yeah. Let's on this one set up about a stable 60 mile an hour descent. And okay. then we'll pick an altitude that's coming up, something like 2,900 feet, and use that as a fake runway altitude. We'll okay. try to hold it off the ground there, and that'll simulate the flare a little better. Okay, hey, prop's going full fine. Good. And we're going to fly the approach at 60? Yep. Uh, we're just going to pretend we're coming down, and at 2,900 feet, we're going to flare for the touchdown. Roger. Okay. Length, no factor. Just to get a feel for what this flare is going to feel like, when does that elevator quit? And we have no flaps, we want it that way or we want flaps? Like yep, the next one we'll do full flaps. Roger. Okay, so here we come up on 2900. So, so good, just use all the energy available to arrest the descent and it's hold a little it aggressive. off the ground. Oh yeah, it's still, so we're already on the ground, I mean like yep. we descended. That would have been the touch. Yep, okay. All right, cool. Um, you can go ahead from here, just lower your nose, continue to fly 60. We'll go to full flaps and see how it feels there. Get it all in, boom, that's all of it. Good. And all you right. can trim it out to be comfortable, gliding at 60. And this time we'll, we'll use uh, 2400 for the fake runway. And same deal, no power adjustment, just let it let it drop out. Yep. It's right there. Yeah, so that was it. And it gives up quick on you at 50 there, right? Yeah. All right, same thing, but we're going to use um, about 14 or 1500 RPM while we hold 50. Okay, keep descending and just do it again? Yep. So, sorry, say again for the power, 1500? Yeah, about 1500 RPM. Because we're full fine, so the power's, yeah. 
50 knots, and our ground is going to be where, sorry? 2,000. 2,000. Here we come. We're at 50, and our power is set. A little high. Yeah, you got a lot more authority with that much power, eh? Yeah. There it is. And a little more of a clean break. Yeah. So using a little bit of power on these approaches uh, towards the bottom can really help you have enough energy to flare. And now we'll do one, let's use 45 miles an hour for an approach and still 1500 RPM and see how much energy is left to arrest the descent rate. So, now that we're warmed up, we're finally going to get into some actual stole flying. Now you want 45? 45, yep. And 1500 RPM? Somewhere right around there. We'll use 1500 as a benchmark and adjust from there. And it'll fake the ground at 2500? Since we're almost there? That'll work great. So 1500 RPM, 2500, there's the ground. Wow, you can really get the nose up with that much power. Helps a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I guess that's the kind of it we mushed out. So. Yep. Let's set one more up, we'll back it down to 1300 RPM. See if we still have that extra effectiveness. And we'll still try to hold 45. All right, we'll pretend the ground is at like 2300. Good. So you want 1300 RPM? Yeah, so there it is there. I feel it mushing. Yeah, so that's a big difference. Yeah. That's a full flaps. So the nose up attitude is significantly less that you've got authority for. Absolutely. All right, so the magic number is 1,500 RPM then for these? Or, or maybe just slightly below, and we can always use a cushion of power at the bottom to help get that nose up. Right. But uh, let's come in and uh, try a few. All right, so we're gonna look at holding 45 the whole way down. Yep, and hold that pitch with your airspeed, and then use your power to adjust whether or not you're gonna make the point you need or to adjust your descent rate, in other words. Yep. So visually aiming, we'll aim about an airplane length past the uh, midfield taxiway there. Yep. And our flare distance uh, should be pretty short between our aim point and Terrain touchdown point. Ahead. Pull up. Orange cup left base, seven grass, whatever. Because the idea is to kind of get it at your stable speed, kind of hanging on the prop a little bit just so you can drop it on right where you mean to, right? Yeah. I tend to avoid the words hanging on the prop. That would remind me of a uh, flat, low descent rate drug in approach. Roger. Uh, but we do try to get it on the kind of backside of the induced drag curve. Okay. Uh, and get that drag working for us to help give us the descent rate. The good news from there is we fly a steep, stable approach. Then we can lower the nose in the event of an engine failure, get better glide back. Right. So 1300 RPM is what we're looking for? Out there. 500. Yeah. Head over traffic, orange cup, final, seven grass, head over. Well, I feel high. What do you think? Yeah, back out just a little more on the power and hold that nose about right where it's at. And then we'll just get on the elevator going down. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Feel the descent. Yeah, sure, coming down, bring a little more power out and lower the nose just a teeny bit. There you go, feel that there? Yep. But we're still a bit long, eh? Yeah. From there, let's just shoot the go around. Nice, establish the climb. Looking good, obstacles clear, we can go flaps up, climb at 71. Yeah, it's good to practice go around anyway, right? Yeah. Head over traffic, orange cup on the go, left traffic, seven grass, head over. Okay, so anything else you want to brief on that? I think I know what I need to do this time. I'm going to get it high, set up in that attitude earlier. Yep. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, you feel it. Yeah, you know when it kicks in, you know when it starts to be on the back side of the curve. Yeah, before that we're just gliding a little too well. Yep. Um, but it's kind of a fine balancing act between having the airflow over the tail to get the uh, energy for the flare you need uh -huh. and just being too low to begin with. Uh, if we add too much power though, then we're just flat. So it's kind of finding that little zone. Roger. Let's go uh, 1400 RPM and about 45 miles an hour on final here. We're just going to final seven grass editor. There's the initial indication. Should start to settle in here. 
towards that deuce drag. Don't bring the power up more. Just kind of leave it there. Feel it starting to mush, kind of oh, settle yeah, in here. There it is, that's cool. Then okay. we'll use power at the bottom to help arrest if we lose energy to arrest the descent. Yeah, so that's the profile we want. Dave. That's what we're after. Roger. And I'm going to just let it settle in the stall. Yep. If I don't need to blip anything, just let it land. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. It's firm, but that's what you're doing, right? You're trying A little, little bit more of an arrival. If anything, uh, did you feel it run out of elevator right at the bottom? So I could have blipped it? Yeah, just a teeny blip. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's easy to overdo it. Yeah, I didn't want to overdo it, so I was thinking I'm going to just let it settle because I know I don't have too much descent. Yep. But that's the steep, stable approach right in there. Roger. And from there, you know, you can manipulate a little more power to make the runway if you're short, or a little less power if you want to come down. Sweet. When we're dealing with this little energy, we can't flare very high. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be kind of timed for the bottom. Yeah. I'm really liking what we're seeing on final though, where you're settling in and feeling that kind of high drag, slow approach, makes yeah. us nice and steep. Yeah, and no, I'm getting that. I just need to get the flare right. Yeah. Those were just the highlights from what was about a 90 minute lesson getting ready to do a real trip. It'll be easy to get a uh, fuel truck in here. Then we'll kind of brief head on out. So I hope you enjoyed that one. We've got a lot more great content coming from this trip. It was some awesome training. I'm really happy to share it. The team from Tac Arrow really went all out taking us out to the field. So a huge thanks to them, as well as thanks to Cub Crafters for providing the airplane. And of course, thanks to all the Patreon supporters and sponsors for the ongoing support to create this content. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. Holy crap. <laughs> Got hot in there, man. I should have worn a t-shirt. <laughs> it's hot. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, those are some pretty bouncy ones, eh? I never didn't have it. It just wasn't pretty. A couple of them. All good. Directionally controlled. That's what we're after. And we achieved the goal of finding that steep, stable approach there. Sure did.